All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brescher here. Today, we're going to be able to construct a box and whisker plot from a given set of data and find the interquartile range. We will also be able to find the mean absolute deviation for a given set of data. And this will be working on the standard that you see below. Moving on, let's first examine some uh, academic vocabulary terms that you might hear in this lesson. First of all, we have to know what a quartile is. And a quartile is when you divide a rank order data set into four equal parts. So if we divided this data set into four equal parts, we would have different quartiles. And I'm just going to break it down here. And the first part from here to here would be the first quartile. And that's why we have it labeled quartile one or the lower quartile. The middle line stands for the median or quartile 2. The next line is quartile 3 or the upper quartile. And then we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4 parts. Now, I know they don't appear to be equal, but whenever we construct a box and whisker plot, it will make a whole lot more sense to you. Next, the interquartile range. Uh, the interquartile range is the distance between the first and the third quartile. So we're looking at the distance from the third quartile to the first quartile. And to find that, you take the third quartile minus the first quartile. Next, the mean absolute deviation. This is the average distance, and you notice absolute like absolute value has to do with distance and that value is always positive the average distance between each data value and the mean so we'll be taking a look at how to find that now on this box and whisker plot you'll also hear me refer to this value and this value this is called the lower extreme right here lower extreme and this is called the upper extreme this upper extreme is the highest number in the set of data, and the lower extreme is the lowest number in the set of data. Let's take a look at a practice problem. Make a box and whisker plot and find the interquartile range. The first thing we want to do is find the median for the set of data. So I'm going to stop right here, find the median for the set of data. So I've put my numbers in order from least to greatest for this data set. Now to find the median, I'm looking for the middle number. I'm going to uh, slash off um, the lowest number and the highest number and I'm going to keep doing that until I get to the middle number. In this case we have two numbers in the middle. So we need to find the average of these two or the middle part of these two numbers. 10 plus 11 is 21 and 21 divided by 2 gives us that middle number. Most of you could probably look at this and see that Halfway between 10 and 11 is 10.5. So that's our median value, and that's what we're going to label first on our box and whisker plot. The next thing we want to do is follow the directions up here, and it tells us then find the median of the upper half and the lower half of the data. So the upper half would be these three numbers because they're above the median. And the lower half would be these three numbers because they're below the median. If we're finding the median of the upper half, we end up with 12. And the median of the lower half, we end up with 9. Now, when we mark that on our box and whisker plot, we mark the 12, like so, and the 9. And all you need to do right now is just connect them to make the box. Next, we need to add the whiskers. In order to add the whiskers for this, and this says to construct the box and whisker plot, to add the whiskers, it, we're just looking for the lowest value in the set of data, which is 4, and the highest value, which is 18. And we make a mark there and connect it with a line, 4 and 18. And now you've constructed your box and whisker plot. In order to find the interquartile range, we take the third quartile value minus the first quartile value. So we have the third quartile value right here 
minus the first quartile, and we get 12 minus 9 equals 3. That is your inner quartile range. And it just gives us a better understanding of how the data is kind of spread out around the median in this case. Next, we're going to find the mean absolute deviation. When finding this, the first thing we need to do is find the mean for the set of data. So we're going to add all the values together. And once we have that sum, 63, we divide by the number of pieces of data to get our mean. And there are six pieces of data. So 63 divided by 6. It just so happens, and this isn't every time, but in this case, our mean is exactly the same as our median was from the previous problem. When we divide that mean, we get 10.5. The next thing we want to do is we want to take this mean, and mean absolute deviation is how far each of the numbers in the data set deviates from this number. How far is the distance of this number from this number? So we're going to start with one of the numbers in the set, and it's 7. I'm just going to little, make a little circle around this. This is the number we're starting with, and we're going to write 10.5, the mean, minus that number. And we get 3.5. Then we'll do the same thing with another number from the data set. So we're using 4 this time. When we subtract that, the distance is 6.5 units from the mean. Next, we're using the number 10. And when we subtract that, it's 0.5 units from the mean. Then we have 11. So I'm going through each individual number from that data set. And you'll notice I changed the order here. I took 11 minus 10.5. And the reason is because it's the distance, which is always a positive value. So I'm just going to put the bigger number farther to the left when I subtract. You can also do it using the absolute value of their difference, um, but if you don't know how to subtract with integers or rational numbers, you may want to just put the greater value to the left. And I'll keep going until I've got all of them. So 12 and 18 and the distances for those numbers are as follows. Once I have all of my distances, I want to add all the distances together. So I'm simply taking every one of these distances and all of these and adding them together right here. When I add them together, I end up with a sum of 20. And I'm going to divide that by the six pieces of data. So I'm trying to find the average distance each number is from the mean. And we end up with, when we take this 20, we divide by the number of pieces of data to get our answer of 3.3 repeating. That's what that line above the 3 means. Also, 3 and 2 six is what it would simplify to as a fraction or mixed number. And 2 6 actually simplifies to 1 3rd. So the answer is 3 and 1 3rd. Let's try one on your own. Here's a problem for you to practice. 10 students took the final exam. There were 60 questions on the exam, and these were the number of questions each student got correct. Make a box and whisker. Find the interquartile range and mean absolute deviation. Okay, uh, there must have been a lot of bonus because it looks like a few of them got more than 60 questions correct. Maybe this was the percentages. But go ahead and use this set of data to construct a box and whisker plot uh, and find the interquartile range as well as mean absolute deviation. Then pause your screen and we'll go over the answer. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, first of all, when you find the median, you end up with 52.5, which is halfway between 51 and 54. Then, when you find the median of the lower half, you get 42. The median of the upper half is 60. We connect those to make our box, and you should have whiskers that stretch out to 35, the lower extreme, and a whisker that stretches to 
73, the upper extreme. Now let's check on the interquartile range. 60 minus 42 is 18. So your interquartile range is 18. And finally, solving the mean absolute deviation. And first, when you find the mean, you have to find the sum of all the numbers, which is 530. We take that divided by the number of pieces of data, which is 10, to get the mean of 53. Once you have the mean, then we're going to look at the distance from this number to the mean. 54 to 53 is one unit. From 40 to 53 is 13 units. From 69 to 53 is 16 units. From 49 to 53 is 4 units. From 73 to 53 is 20 units. And I will keep finding those distances. 11, 18, 7, 2, and finally 57 to 53 is 4 units. When you add all those distances together, we get 96 units and divide by the number of pieces of data to find our mean absolute deviation is 9.6. And again, this is just another measure of spread. Um, the lower this number is, that means that your data is a lot closer together and the farther or the higher this number is, the farther apart or the more spread out your data is. Well, I hope this helped you to better understand box and whisker plots, interquartile range, as well as the mean absolute deviation. See ya!